By January 1965, close friends of Pio Gama Pinto, Vice President Oginga Odinga's key political strategist, were warning him that his life was in danger. They advised him to lie low or even leave the country altogether for a while. Pinto did leave Nairobi to spend some time in Mombasa in the hope that things would be fine by the time he came back home. He returned to the city on February 23rd. The following morning, he was shot dead by a gunman as he drove out of his driveway at his Westlands home, the first political assassination independent Kenya had witnessed. Pinto had been the most articulate left-leaning member of Odinga's camp. His friends blamed his death on the government of President Jomo Kenyatta, which at the time was busy trying to keep the international Cold War out of Kenyan politics. That war manifested itself in the rivalry between Odinga's camp, which had close ties with the Soviet Union and other communist states, and the camp of Tom Boya, Secretary General of the ruling Kenya African National Union KANU, which had close ties to the United States and other Western capitalist states. Nowhere did this Cold War show itself better than in the country's trade union movement. Mboya and his conservative allies controlled the Kenya Federation of Labour, KFL, while Odinga's associates were represented in unions affiliated with the Kenya African Workers' Congress, KAWC, among whose founders had been Pinto. When in June 1965, rival supporters of the two trade union federations clashed in a violent encounter in Nairobi, Kenyatta dissolved both bodies and replaced them with the Central Organization of Trade Unions, KOTU, in a move ostensibly meant to bring unity to the movement. Mboya's man, Clement Lubembe, who had headed the KFL, became Secretary General of the new organization. In December, Kenyatta would go further in his anti-leftist moves. In a cabinet reshuffle, he left Odinga's job untouched. But to strengthen the conservatives, he now brought in Ronald Ngala, former leader of the Kenya African Democratic Union, KADU, whom he had bypassed at the Jamhuri Day cabinet appointments the previous year. He made him head of the new Ministry for Cooperatives and Marketing. Going largely unnoticed at the time was his transfer of the police, internal security and immigration to Daniel Arab Moy at Home Affairs, portfolios which had until then been with Njoroge Mungai, Minister for Defence and Internal Security. Moy was now in effect one of the most powerful men in Kenyatta's government, certainly more powerful than Odinga, whose responsibilities as Vice President remained fairly inconsequential. Within a few weeks, Moy would be using his new powers to join battle on behalf of Kenyatta against Odinga and the radicals. 1965 was the year in which Grace Onyango was elected mayor of Kisumu, becoming the first woman in post-independence Kenya to be elected mayor. And it was the year Kano broke two world records one in the 3,000 meters in Helsinki and the other in the 5,000 meters race in Auckland, New Zealand. 